Welcome everyone to the Tower Twin Guide. Today I'll be covering Yuki, Mumia Island's anime protagonist. Today's guide was made possible thanks to Alex Presso, another top NA player. I'll be leaving this in the description below not only his DAC, but also his YouTube channel, where he mainly likes to post cooking videos about different in-game recipes for multiple video games, including a turn return. Thank you so much, Alex, and without further ado, let's get into the video. Yuki is a very simple character. For many people, the poster boy when it comes to the tutorial. So many people look down on this character since he can be one of the easiest ones to play, but that doesn't mean he's not hard to master. Looking at some of his strengths and weaknesses, Yuki is a very strong character into auto attackers since he does have the ability to disarm them, as well as quickly auto cancel in order to beat them in an auto trade. He has a very easy and fast combo doing using many of his animation cancels as well as the ability to secure kills and objectives using his ultimate. He also has a pretty good mobility and above average chase if you're able to hit your E for some cooldown reduction as well as using your W for the cooldown decrease on your E. Now looking at some of his weaknesses, Yuki cannot hop walls, it's one of the biggest things that gets abuse against him. Additionally, he's animation locked during W which can get cancelled if interrupted by any CC and that way he would not have any cufflinks to use the rest of his empowered abilities. Furthermore, he's also very very reliant on CDR, at least when you're playing with him in the Souls game mode, making him need specific transitions and specific itemization in order to make him work. Next up, we have his max order. For his max order, we're going to be leveling passive, then E, then Q, and finally W. Some players, especially when playing uh, Dual Sword Yuki, don't like to, max to put any points in R until further into the game, since a lot of the times it will end up being a DPS loss rather than auto attacking. Next up, looking at our augments, we're going to be looking at Diamond Shard as well as Cavalcade and Steadfast. And our secondary tree is going to be Stopping Power plus Quench or Anima Reaper, depending on which one you want. Specifically, you want to make sure if you're going Anima Reaper to have a final zone in your looting that has a bears. That way, you can start filling those Anima Reaper stacks pretty quickly into the game. Now, looking at our transitions, recommended stats. Looking at Yuki's transition and recommended stats, for the most part, Yuki is a very C CDR reliant character. For the most part, you need to make sure that no matter what you're building, you would need to remain over 25% cooldown reduction and be as close as 30 as possible. After that, for the most part, you can do anything you want with AP and crit stats after that, but I would recommend trying to keep crit at least around 68 plus percent while keeping that 25 to 30% CDR. Both two handed and DS Yuki thrive from their weapon transitions. For two handed Yuki, you can get level 18 earlier into the game so you might want to consider getting that until you get your day and sleep later into the game since it will give you a really high power spike in the early game both of them have dice of destiny as their best option and their accessory this is a very strong item for them since it gives them both the crit and cooldown reduction that they are really seeking for now looking at our matchups our three best matchups are going to be bernice lara and kiara for bernice your yuki e is going to be able to go through bernice traps and if you hit your arm it will completely disrupt them bernice is really relying on his auto attacks and you can also really burst him down since he is pretty squishy now looking at Lara, you can completely prevent Lara's ultimate using your parry if you're playing two-handed and she doesn't really have an ability that prevents you from getting near her so she can't really do anything to stop you now looking at kiara once again if you're playing two-handed you can use parry to negate her the kiara R reactivation or parry the root if you can kill her before that for the most part this is another auto attacker that will completely get disrupted if you use your e to disarm so it should be a pretty simple matchup for you to beat. Now looking at our worst matchups, these are a bit more universal both if you're playing two-handed at dual swords in comparison to our best matchups. We're going to be looking at Emma, Chloe, and Barbara. Emma can teleport away anytime Yuki is in melee range and can take a lot of your HP away by just poking you before you can even get there. So it's a pretty pretty hard matchup to play. Additionally, she can use the walls to the best potentials. So she is able to jump them while you can't. So all around a really bad matchup. Now looking at Chloe, she pretty much thrives because of her ultimate making her unable to be killed until you kill both her and the doll and Yuki doesn't really have enough AoE damage to take both of them out unless she's really behind so because of this Chloe is a pretty hard matchup now look at Barbara this one's pretty simple she pretty much will just burst you down anytime you get close using her ultimate uh, so you don't want to fight this character as a melee as long as she has her ultimate up now look at our combos Yuki pretty much doesn't really have uh, the, the big of a combo for the most part you want to make sure you're using your auto resets animation cancels so for the most part your basic is going to be trying to use auto 
going, then using your Q as an auto cancel and then auto again. And then if you're needing to engage into the target, if they're a little far, then you can E, then auto, then Q, and then auto. And after that, you're going to be going to press W to refresh your cooldowns and lower the CD on your E. If you're going to be trying to do R, if this is a character that doesn't have a dash per se, maybe like a Vernice, uh, and you think your ult is in kill range, you're going to be wanting to use your full rotation as follows. You're going to want to E in, then auto, and then Q, and then you're going to take one step back and then ultimate. The reason you're taking a step back is that way they don't just go to your back and they immediately cross you. So it's a little important to keep that distance there. This is specifically strong against, again, characters like Bernice that don't really have any dashes if you do have enough damage to kill them in one rotation. Now, looking at our game plan, this is specifically for Tuihane Yuki, who's a scaling character. So rushing objectives is really not necessary. You're going to be wanting to farm until you get your D skill because it will help you make or break a lot of fights. The most optimal Yuki routes pretty much end near a bear zone, which is why we mentioned Anime Reaper earlier. So farming bears and any anything else during night one, it's pretty much what you're going to want to do before going to alpha or a battle zone. If you do want to contest a night one objective, meteorite, it's more valuable than tree, then going for alpha and battle zone. Now looking at our mid game, this could pretty much going to be again, most of farming, uh, whatever animal rotations you got, you got going on, and then showing up to night two objectives if you feel you're pretty strong. Once again, you can get levitine pretty early on. So if you do happen to do this, it will be a good power spike and it will help you contest other objectives such as Omega and Wick in a much safer and faster way. For DS Yuki, you're going to be wanting to get your spring on autumn pretty much every game. This transition with the attack range is very important for you, so make sure you're getting this. Now, looking at your tips, as a melee character that can't jump walls, Vision is your best friend. Controlling CCTV of zones and having cameras and drones to get jumps on enemies is ideal. If you're able to do this in order to escape having to use E to engage, then you can use E after whenever they try to create space away from you. Another tip, understand when to proc D shard. D shard as your Ackman is the moment you want to front load all of your damage. So hitting Q and then just randomly walking away, it's not going to be the play. Make sure you're playing around it. Another tip, using your ult is pretty risky. Make sure you're only trying to use it when everything else is on cooldown and a few autos will not kill the enemy since you're going to be locked up on animation for a very long time until the second proc of your ultimate. While you're ulting, you are CC immune, but you can still take damage and you can still be displaced. For example, if you're fighting a Marcus and he used decide to ultimate, he can burger flip you to the other side and your ultimate will completely miss. Last tip, both of your D skills but on parry and dual sword skills are considered dashes in this game. So make sure to be careful when you're going against enemies that can ground you since you will not be able to use your D skill on either version of Yuki. Well, that was it for me. Hopefully you find anything useful in this guide. And if you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next guide. Bye bye.